Hello Fusion fans, today we have another edition of the Nuclear Fusion Shark Tank. This episode was recorded on February 5th, 2020. Today we're going to be hearing from Dr. Kelso Ribeiro. Dr. Ribeiro has a long history in fusion. He was a member of the Cullum Fusion staff for over 10 years. Dr. Ribeiro is proposing a compressing spherical tokamak approach. As you know, there may be some upfront issues with this. The internal structure of a spherical tokamak has a hodgepodge of electric and magnetic fields along with plasma structures that form stability regions, islands, the edge region, and the pedestal. Compressing a spherical tokamak would mean overcoming all of these issues, but Dr. Ribeiro argues that there are pathways to do this and also that the value gained by compressing the tokamak would lead to potentially net power. This work is most similar to the work being conducted at General Fusion, where a liquid metal liner is used to compress a compact toroid. With that, please enjoy the presentation. Okay, so have a good night, everyone. And so it's a pleasure to be here. And um, so basically my talk is, is the Coolert experiment, the potential path toward the compact and a small fusion reactor. So, and I would say small is not redundant with compact because they need to have a relatively um, um, low temperature, uh, is small fusion reactor instead to have something very large. And uh, so um, people who work in the nuclear industry, they have the uh, um, a small modular reactor, they can make some parallel. So basically, first of all, I acknowledge Matthew for the invitation. And I can always people who gave me a lot of data and a lot of device, like for people in Pegasus, Michael Bongard, Jeff Cunningham, who gave me a Fiesta code for equilibrium simulation. More recently, uh, Alan Glazer, he's willing to make a sort of a uh, inter interconnect Fiesta code, equilibrium code with his decon. We haven't liaised a lot, but you have an initial discussion. And also people from PPPL, they, you know, they want to help a lot in this project, particularly in the context of Infuse program, which I wrote a proposal for them last year while I was working in another company, which unfortunately couldn't afford that project to push forward. So I'm looking for a, a new partner for that project. I'm a single man in that project again. So, so basically, um, my all to line, I just make a, a brief introduction. Not everyone is fusion experts, like, you know, some people are highly knowledgeable and some people are extremely knowledgeable, like Tom Dolan, which so great part of that presentation one year ago or so. And uh, so then I go straight away to my mouse here is get a little bit crazy, but I go straight away to cool, uh, cool art design, how to give a flavor and try to show the, the, so the, the, the um, some simulations and some calculations of several parameters important for a device, like equilibrium current drive confinement, goes to the major aspect is that the about compression. And, um, and then, try to show that how a cool art like um, device could be a reactor in a, a cycle uh, in of uh, about compression and if you have time some conclusions so basically i'm just show the the beta is a parameter for magnet confined plasma efficiency so basically and this is a parameter which impact the cost of electricity of a fusion reactor it's not the only one you know the, but it's one of them, and so basically is basically is the the kinetic pressure divided by magnetic pressure. So which is in that form. So ultimately, the uh, I spend the external energy from the magnetic field to confine that pressure here. So this is the density and temperature. So the minimum I spend externally to get the, to hold that plasma, the better, the more efficient, and the higher is beta so it's very straightforward parameter so but very relevant so the convention talk a max like ether you know they have that geometry like a donut convention one with a, a parameter also we did define this the stability it's called safety factor it's relatively low it's four and they have a very low beta and uh, so we spend a lot of energy magnetic energy uh, in order to have a, uh, uh, the same kinetic energy 
Uh, so basically, it's very, it's very inefficient, but you know, it may work as a reactor, but in the cost of electricity might be uh, very high. People envisage 20 years ago or so, it's very tokamak, so they realized by theory that if you reduce the low spectrum, more spherical. The aspect the, the, the is going to be more stable. This safety effect goes to from four to twelve, and when the aspect ratio reduce, and that these have higher toroidal um, uh, beta, so it's more efficient. Obviously, for, for the same uh, uh, power, also you have a more uh, a, a power for a unit of surface. You have uh, it, it became higher. You have a, a power constraint. Also, you have some constraints of the central part. You cannot have huge magnetic field here. So, um, because of the central post here it has a, a, a physical constraint. So, basically, this is the difference of conventional tokamaks like ether and spherical tokamaks. So basically, the major motivation for the spherical tokamak is the, the fusion economy. So basically, the fusion power is proportional to the b to the square and magnetic field to fourth power. So basically, for a given magnetic field, if you have a higher beta, so this is very favorable for the fusion power. So, so basically, also uh, for um, uh, higher magnetic fields, those is interesting for a spherical tokamak because the empirical scaling laws and shows that the, uh, the magnet, the energy confinement time, increase with magnetic fields more or less around linear. So it's between 7.71. So. So basically, the challenge of spherical tokamak, of course, is to have a high toroidal field, given that constraint, the, the, the geometric constraint. So it's more efficient, but it's, some people believe that's not scalable for a reactor. So given that, say, well, we, uh, I envisage, say, well, let's try to best of spherical tokamak in a more unusual approach. So an initial approach is to have the high bit, highest bit possible and try to compress as a, a magnetic fusion target community uh, envisaged for a reactor. So basically, you know, without much ado, I go straight more or less to what Coolart's like and what's the size. So Coolart is a medium sized device and relatively here to a human being of my size. And so, so uh, it's very compact, the plasma, uh, it's very close to the vest, but not uh, extremely close. There is a limiter of two uh, uh, centimeters. So obviously can make the plasma smaller if impurities will be a problem. But the idea is to take advantage of the entire volume because once you compress, the, the final parameters like temperature and density are going to be proportional to the, the, the volume variation. So the, the highest I have at the beginning, the better. And there are many uh, uh, advantages to have that as well. Possibly I could reach H mode uh, easier. And so, and also I could have a passive stabilization to have a high beat as a target. So, so basically the major, there are several objectives in, in cool art, uh, but the major one, I try to focus to one single one, is to have a, a very efficient fusion concept, very low cost because of, it's very compact. Try to reach Q equals one to relatively low temperature, around 10 kV, using adiabatic compression in an extremely high beta target plasma. This is very important. It's not any target. I can compress any target, but high beta, the, the highest beta, the more efficient the concept is. And also, given this, all these uh, interesting aspects, Cooler is very suitable for uh, RPE and infuse DOE programs. In fact, last year, while I was trying to promote this Cooler in, a, in another company, I wrote an infuse pro, uh, call, uh, a proposal, and, but unfortunately, we didn't have a, a dense number, which is just bureaucratic number, and we could not go forward. But the people in PPL, the, which are my colleagues in the spherical tokamak community, they are start to help already. So I can do that again. So I go just show where the cooler is like in this sort of a you know, nuclear fusion uh, uh, zoo. So basically, everyone knows about magnetic confined fusion, which 
normally people uh, include Tokamak, Stellar Ages, Field Reverse Configuration, and many others. I just uh, summarize here. And you have a magnetized fusion, um, um, mag magnetized target fusion, which is try to capitalize of the best of the uh, magnetized confinement fusion and inertia. So basically, and so basically, if you divide tokamaks in the conventions like ether and spherical tokamak as I presented before, cool art is spherical tokamak by nature, but it can operate as in a, in a, in the realm of the magnetized target fusion. So I compress that plasma. So basically, cool art has a sort of a hybrid uh, uh, approach. It can work in one way in a very conventional liaison with the entire community, capitalize of the knowledge and everything, but also try to take the best of spherical tokamak in order to compress. So this makes cooler in that as a, a magnetized target fusion experiment. So the, the entire community for the most of people in the magnetized uh, confined uh, fusion community all think of steady state. Coolert can liaise with that, but you know, if you, if you liaise with this one, with the magnetized target fusion, we're going to have a repetition rate operation like all those concepts. So basically, it's very versatile device. It can capitalize one, but the major operation we envisage to be in a compressed more as a magnetized target fusion device. So, so I repeat a little bit here, uh, Coolert in that context, but reduce uh, 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 a little bit. And try to show that the steady state operation is very interesting, but there are still some unknown, uh, there's some challenges of materials for the power load and how to cope with the neutrons and tritium breeder in the envisage has, but has not been re uh, tested yet. Ether is going to give the first idea how it's going to work. And also there's some challenge of refueling. How can you refuel in a steady state, very hot plasma using pellet injection in the center? There is still not clear how it can be done. And this is very important. If you cannot refuel, it cannot be a reactor. So, so basically obviously in repetition rate operation in, this, in, in, in that concept also is very important to point out that the output energy depends on the huge cycle. So it has to have a high repetition rate in order to have, um, uh, to, to have a, um, some energy output on average, which can be uh, uh, feasible for a reactor. So basically, uh, I mean, in some sense, cooler is very uh, fortunate concept because it, it's very robust foundation because its, it's foundation is in, in, in tokamak 60 years experience. Also, it, it's funded in, in a spherical tokamak and in approved high beta in experimental data as we want to have for our target of close to unit which is very unique, it's a world record. So we're going to use that world record as our target. So, it's, so basically I also capitalize the most efficient way to heat the plasma, which are the about compression. Obviously it has to be pulsed. But if I pulse the ultra high beta, I compress more plasma than the magnetic field. So this makes things more efficient than compress any uh, other plasma. So ultimately, as a summary, um, so cooler expect to be a low risk because of this background, low cost because very compact and the most efficient uh, uh, fusion concept because you use adiabatic compression at ultra high beta. So this, so now I move a little bit forward. So basically the motivation cooler is based in Pegasus, this uh, machine in, in Wisconsin, which obtained 95% beta. And, um, and, and, you know, they, now they are, they have to redefine, uh, redefine the device to do other things, unfortunately. They, um, but they obtain also because the way they create plasma current without the solenoid, ion temperature, higher than electric temperature because they create by uh, plasma current via reconnection of lower list injection. So basically the idea is to use the, this target in, this is the same uh, size 
uh, of the device of S because but the plasma is larger. And the idea is to capitalize at least of these parameters here to be compressive. So basically these Pegasus have 100 kiloamps, Coolart have five times, Coolart is larger, has 0.1 Tesla to confine this one based in Pegasus. So in other words, I base everything in something experimental data. And so basically, and so with those parameters, I expect to have a high energy confinement time. So it's gonna be 13 milliseconds. So with more or less of approximately the same cost. So the first objective of cooler is to have a said extremely high beta, possibly H mode, high magnetic field because I have a, no solenoid, I have space to, to drive more current in a central post with solenoid free. Um, but also the major aspect, as I mentioned, as a major task I want to tackle is adiabatic compression that ultra low uh, uh, at extremely high beta. So basically, for my understanding, this is the best way, the lowest cost way to obtain that value of temperature and density, which is equivalent to one megawatt fusion power. I deliberately create that scenario using adiabatic compression uh, formulary. So basically, this should be the first, the, the ultimate milestone of Coulard as this size. So basically, based on that, if everything succeeds, so you can start a Coulard-like, try to extrapolate to a device with a much larger power and, um, and, and uh, fusion power and fusion power amplification. So this day, the view graph, more or less, I, I present before. I'm not going to go to the technical aspects of this, but this show that the machine is not doesn't use superconducting, uses pre, you know conventional um, um, technology uh, technological uh, issues related to the fusion community. So there is everything is copper made, and and so ba basically there is no is a very low risk as far materials and techniques for construction is concerned. Has to be well designed for compression like um, ATC, uh, a machine uh, created for uh, doing adiabatic compression in Princeton well, decades ago. But so has to, well, has to be well designed, but there is no uh, any, I don't rely any anything magic or new materials like superconductor. So there's, I go to a little bit to simulations. There's some colleagues from Oak Ridge, the uh, Mike Sanchez, in the first simulation of equilibrium, I'm not going to, uh, so he's prepared to help a little bit further. Another colleague from the University of Washington, he has a very interesting code which is interlinked with the, uh, stability and, and in many other things he did simulation as well. But you know, these people, like everyone is in, in the US and everywhere, they're very busy. And they, they, you know, they have to have a framework in order to help in a project like this. So as an experimentalist, but as a single man too, I start to do the equilibrium my, by myself and try to try to simulate that plasma very close to the vessel, and and try to reproduce extremely high beat like pigs in cool art. So for I have here. Uh, for the time being, without much optimization, I can have 6% beta. So this is already a suitable plasma to be compressed. And the plasma indeed is extremely D-shaped with very few coils, thanks for the, the whole plasma current profile, which makes all the design is simple. So everything conspired positively. So I have extremely high beta, very simple design. And so a plasma which takes up most of the volume. So if I take that plasma and put in sort of a beta uh, chart, which include all the tokamaks, here you have a green one, is this conventional tokamaks, spherical tokamaks, the blue ones, and Pegasus with the data which expands the beta limits and to much higher values here. So we are here, we expect with some optimization to be here along Pegasus uh, constant magnetic field and with Passive stabilization. So all this to say that we can have perhaps beta even higher at the beginning as a target. So therefore, after the compression, you'll be even more efficient. So I can also, uh, this is just a qualitative, I presented those profiles. Though all those profiles 
I take from the equilibrium code. So those profiles are very interesting or and needed to do any study of stability and transport later on. So the current drive, as I mentioned, we are not going to rely in solenoid like Pegasus. We're going to rely in loyalist injection. And with two injectors as demonstrated already in Pegasus, experimentally, I can have the half megampere in this for cooler. So if I have four of them, I may reach one megampere, but this will be sort of a, a upgrades in the, in, in the future. So, but I have already the technique to drive the current I need. So also just to, to mention very quickly, um, there's 20% of self generate current by bootstrap in cool art based in the, the, um, in the equilibrium parameters and scaling laws. So the confinement, as I mentioned, this is an interesting aspect of, I rely in uh, confinement scaling laws. So because for the tokamak community, so I can predict how the energy confinement time is going to be. Obviously there's some uncertainty, but it's better than just guess that one. So this has empirical and, and based in, uh, this empirical base. So basically using all the parameters of cool art, I end up to have something around 12 milliseconds, which is sufficiently large to compress in a time scale of three or two milliseconds without having something in as far post uh, power system, very complex and very co uh, and expensive. So it's gonna be easy to compress this one. So that's why coolant cannot be smaller because if it is smaller, the energy confinement times be, be smaller and I have to compress much faster and then became more challenging. So, but so it'll be very easy to, com to, to compress. And also using the same scaling for, you know, for database, I can imagine that the threshold of power to have H mode of uh, its uh, state of high energy confinement time uh, is, is already there. So basically, I have sufficient power to achieve H mode for any scaling, including the empirical scaling law for spherical tokamak. So I may end up to have a target plasma with extremely high beta and high energy confinement time simultaneously. And this is something really remarkable. So now I go very, very quickly to add about, so I, put a cross section of the, the, the cool art. And this T0 is the initial configuration, which is the, I, I could uh, uh, simulate easily by equilibrium. And the final one, I put TF2. There is another final one, TF1, which is this, the, this column here, but you can disregard for that compare, comparison. So we're going to compare the initial state before the compression and the final state at that, that volume here. So basically the first column is the column you have seen before. And, um, and you have the initial plasma, the temperature is almost 300 EV for electron and um, almost 500 uh, for uh, ion. The density is relatively low, is 1.510 to uh, 19. Um, but after the compression, the, the, the ratio of the volume is enormous here. And by using the scaling laws, the density goes to 1, 10 to 21. It's still for, for practical reasons for the magnetic fusion, uh, magnetic target fusion is still relatively low, but for, for tokamax is very high. And, uh, but the, remarkably, the temperature goes, if you're using the same scaling laws as the adiabatic process, it goes to 8 kV. And this brings to the fusion power of one megawatt, I deliberately create that case, in a neutron flux relatively to this one of 3.6, 10 to 17 neutrons per second. Obviously I have to wait one second after the compression in order to collect those neutrons. So, but this is a one megawatt of equivalent of DT fusion power. If I would have a 50% a, a of deuterium and tritium in that experiment. So in a medium sized device, you could, have, you know, if it's stability allowed to have one megawatt fusion power. So if I use those numbers and calculate uh, the power amplification, and the obvious there's some level of uncertainty here, I can end up to a number which is 
very good to be true, apparently, because the, the entire community doesn't have this sort of break even if you have one yet. And if you use low sum criteria and put the density in this, calculate the average, and calculate the ion temperature average instead of using the peak one because it's higher, I can have something here, point here, above the Q equals one. If you can see how many other devices with higher infrastructure, long period than millions and millions of dollars, they haven't reached Q equals one yet. So if everything will be fine, we can have with a relatively low temperature, have a high efficient a plasma above break even. Obviously, the, the difficult here is to have the, to have the energy confinement time after compression. I have to hold that compression plasma for the energy confinement time of the compressed plasma, which is in the order of 0.2 seconds. So this, technically speaking, is going to put some um, um, constraints in engineering. Can the engineering constraints allowed to hold the plasma at that time scale. So this something has to be addressed for the engineering. So it's not physics problem, it's engineering problem in order to achieve the, those, uh, that performance. So basically if I imagine a reactor based on that concept, I will have a, a compression, this magnetic field. I compress the plasma in both two ways. So basically I compress the plasma, decompress, compress again and the cycle goes on and on and on. So and the interesting aspect here between the decompression, I get rid of the alpha particles. So I could compress the plasma, hold for the alpha particles to hit the plasma and then decompress everything or even switch off the, the discharge and get rid of those, the ash. And so basically, which something the, uh, the, the steady state device cannot do it. Once they create the ash, uh, their steady state, they cannot get rid of the alpha particles or the, uh, the um, uh, after they, they, uh, they, they distribute the energy or they deposit the energy into the plasma. So this one problem that we, that concept of pulsed, uh, a cycle pulsed device can, uh, can, uh, can tackle easily. So basically, how is the, so this is the way Coulard is going to work, compression and decompression. So, um, so now one of the last view graphs or the last view graph and with people who, you know, want to know a little bit uh, resource estimate cost. It's not precise, but it get, gives some idea how, how things can be. I divide, oops, I divide the project in five years. And uh, the first year, we, you know, I need more simulations of physics, uh, the, the stability, and refine uh, equilibrium and stability and eventually transport. So this, we need uh, three or four people to work on that, and um, and and also in some aspects of the engineering, and so the first year and obviously this very low cost at the very the beginning. First year is just simulation. We need the office with computers and knowledgeable people, and obviously we need some consulting. So uh, o otherwise, you know, uh, we cannot progress. So the the consultant could be part of the infused program of DOE. So, which I envisaged last year. So, and I envisage again. So this will be a very uh, cheap way to have a uh, um, um, consulting in physics and, in, and mainly engineering for, for example, for people in Princeton, for Oak Ridge and in, in other parts. So the second year, we try to integrate physics and engineering, mainly try to look at the constraints to see if all the beautiful physics of performance can be really realized. And I'm pretty sure the engineering constraints are going to put some, you know, uh, are going to reduce all the performance we expect, or oh, it might not be, but we have to integrate the physics and engineering. And then, and also we start uh, to do some procurement in the last, um, the last month of the second year. Assuming you can do that in the in two years, so in the second year is gonna be more expensive because we're going to buy everything we need to construct the device. 
So the third year, we start the construction. And with a little bit, since we expect, you spend two years doing simulation, design, integration, and so on and so on. So if you do in a very efficient way, in a, a good design, obviously going to have a meetings of um, people are going to adopt meetings and people are going to give opinion about design and so on. We're not going to do uh, a lot. We're going to involve the community, having the comment and to help on that. So in the third year, we have a construction and maybe in the last months, we start to do some types of initial break, uh, operation to have the first shot to validate day one diagnostics and magnetics, interferometer, um, and something very simple at the beginning. And so basically the campaigns, uh, um, a more proper campaign start the fourth year, if you'll be totally lucky here. And obviously the number of people start to increase with the time as expected because you need physicists which deal with the diagnostics. And so basically uh, this minimum of number of people, technical physicists, which you need in an experiment like that. It's very likely I will need much more than that, include technicians and um, one or two administrative people. So we need to consult it full time uh, uh, as many other companies are rely on. And so basically this operation, I envisage every, uh, the phase one, I try to establish the steady state regimes in spherical uh, tokamak, validate equilibrium reconstruction, validate key diagnostics, which Thompson is getting, neutron detection, and validate stability codes and neutronics with MCNP. Explore, and start to explore high beta operation, try to see if you can go to close to the limit. And also for the scaling laws, where, which I presented before, I may attempt, I attempt to have H mode and perhaps try to combine high beta and H mode in, in certain scenarios to see what's the best I can have of both. And um, so basically, and we, if everything we find, uh, after learning all those things, validate like diagnostic equilibrium reconstruction, we could do some initial adiabatic compression tests after 40 years. So the, the year after, the fifth year, so we are going to explore much more the adiabatic compression regimes because we learned so much before for the year before. And then start to all the, try to do also some coding, create some codes to calculate the uh, power amplification um, immediate after shot. So it, it's a very complex analysis, which depends on magnetics, uh, measurements, and you know, uh, 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 but we, we need to have something, a tool like that, in order to guide us for having a campaign to have, uh, to obtain Q equals one. And so if you reach that one, we could plan in the same year or perhaps the year after, some campaign to go a little bit beyond and to have that one megawatt fusion power. And um, so, so this will be already remarkable, it will be the last sort of, um, my, uh, the ultimate milestone for Coulard to reach that four or five. So obviously it would be, if the engineering aspect allowed us, we try to do some guess to have to have, instead of just one shot of compression, try to have one or two. Um, and as many as the engineering uh, power supply and the design allowed and the thermal constraints allowed. So basically at that time, we, we have the task seven and that we, if everything works as fine, we can start to plan our new device, uh, uh, cool art like, much, much larger, that you could have a higher fusion power. So basically conclusions, and there are many conclusions I just highlight in red, what I believe is more appropriate for this talk. So basically I present a very low cost, versatile, compact, ultra low spectrum tokamak, which can work uh, in, in, as a, uh, in a mainstream of um, magnetic fu uh, confined fusion or um, in ad uh, adiabatic compression as a magnetized fusion uh, target 
uh, uh, concepts. So basically, again, cool art is very for all those features. It's very suitable for RPE and infuse DOE, and I try to use infuse again this year. Uh, if I get some uh, a partner already for this year. There are many other things related to the, the equilibrium, uh, confinement, and so on and so on. But, you know, I want to overstress that the, for the case we create based on the scaling laws, and so this interesting aspect, everything is robust. We're based in experimental data and scaling law. I can have this 8 kV and then 10 to 21 and the flux 3.6 10 to 19 newtons per second. So this will be the ultimately the adiabat the the, the uh, ultimately milestone for Coulard. And this, if I assume that I can compress the world record now, if I can have higher beta, I can have something even larger. So uh, this will be impact also this the amplification factor, which uh, if I have some higher beta to be compressed in the first place. And it, but, you know, uh, obviously I have to uh, uh, assess the engineering constraints in order to see whether or not I can hold the plasma after the compression in a time scale of 0.2 seconds, which is very, very challenging because I, I'm going to have, uh, after the compression, I'm going to have mega ampere and to have a mega ampere, uh, hold for that amount of time, things are going to be very complex. So I may, the engineering constraints may restrain the energy confinement time or the, the, the time uh, I can hold that plasma and the trouble product might be reduced. But uh, if, if, if it does allow it, uh, we can have something very remarkable with Q's above Q, uh, Q above one. So, so this is interesting because we could imagine that um, uh, uh, any fusion reactor based in that concept could be a relatively low temperature. So you don't need to create a fusion reactor, which is huge. So we could create small units. And again, and uh, so basic people who work in the nuclear uh, um, field, they say, well, this sort of makes something smaller, compact, is what the nuclear, industry, conventional nuclear industry wants with the small modular reactors. So basically the other conclusions are more technical, but so we could bypass. So basically this is what I want to tell you. And um, uh, so now I'm very open for um, questions and if people have my email, they can send email after that in order to, you know, have uh, further questions, but you know, take advantage. We can talk now. So, uh, do we have questions, uh, Dr. Dolan? Uh, I noticed that you're unmuted. You have a question. Yes. Good presentation, Celso. As the okay, plasma expands against the magnetic field, how much of its energy could we convert directly into electricity? I could, I could, I could not I, I, hear you. Your question was: As the plasma expands against the magnetic field, how much of its energy is converted to electricity? Well, uh, I, I have, I haven't done any calculation in in that front yet. What are you getting at, Doctor Dolan? <laughs> it might be a cycle where some a burst of electricity is produced by direct conversion when it expands and then that could go into a system, huh. yeah. system next yeah, cycle. Yeah. What, what I, I believe uh, that- The whole that, generator work. Yeah, what, what I believe I try to capitalize on, uh, the, the, uh, it's not clear how, for example, how I going to, if I'm going to have a, a lithium wall in order to, struck the, the, the neutrons, or if you're going to have a, a conventional uh, breeder, uh, tritium breeder as the conventional tokamax. So uh, that part, how to extract the energy is still not being addressed. And, you know, it'd be interesting to have other people who could put some, some effort on that in order to envisage this reactor um, in, in a more proper way. 
So, but I do believe, for example, uh, I, I could hold the alpha particles after the compression for the the um, the um, the um, the, uh, the the alpha particle exchange energy uh, time so they slow down then uh, of to that plasma is something like 60 milliseconds so it's much more after compression so i could hold that sufficient to get all the energy of the alpha particle before i decompress or switch off the plasma immediately so so this the, uh, we have to, we have to the engineers engineering calculations they are going to tell that if I, how long i can hold the compressed plasma the longer i can hold the better but this creates sort of overheating uh, possible overheating so basically i may need to cool the device before i i started uh, in 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 with ni nitrogen liquid nitrogen or and in, 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 in order to have a, 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 a compress a, a compressed plasma and hold for that time scale. To hold for a time scale of energy confined time is going to be very challenging, but very promising if it can be done, uh, if the engineering aspect. But yes, I need to do by far more calculation towards a reactor. Uh, for the time being, I did the calculation towards uh, that medium-sized device only. I didn't extrapolate anything further. It would be very interesting to pick up your brain in that uh, in that, that framework, if you, your time allows, of course. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, if nobody else has a question, um, so uh, the way I would the way I would do this, and I know you laid out some plans, but uh, for a, a reasonable amount of money, you could set up an experiment on an existing system and you could, the investor could get a quick uh, assessment of how feasible the compression is uh, with, by partnering with an existing institution. Do you have any thoughts on that? I know you laid out some yeah, business yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah, I try actually. The obvious place I went to personally and talked to is Pegasus in Wisconsin. And I talked to Raymond Fong, but he said they designed the device Pegasus. It was designed in order to study the properties of the low aspect ratio, ultra low aspect ratio. And they did the device in a very standard way. The device is very thick. So, and the, the poloidal field coils are, you know, in one single line. So it's not efficient way to um, use the energy to create that plasma. Obviously the plasma is very efficient because it's very high beta. But um, the way that the machine was created was very cheap. So the vest is very thick. So he said, I cannot do any pulsing system here because uh, are you going to have a lot of stray fields and most of the energy of the flux are going to deposit in the vessel, unfortunately. So basically uh -huh. he said, I cannot do that in my experiment. And um, also, in, there is a problem of the energy confinement time in extremely high beta plasmas in Pegasus is not very high because of, the, um, because of the size of the plasma current in the magnetic field. So basically, the energy confinement time to the best is going to be between two and three milliseconds. So in order to pulse something adiabatically it has to be, let me say, 10 times shorter than that. So it, it will be also difficult uh, technically wise. So basically he has two good reasons to say, I cannot do that. First, the energy confined time is relatively short in order to pulse, so that he doesn't have the facility to pulse very fast. Second, even if he had that one, the vest is very thick, was not in visits to, to, to do adiabatic compression. Therefore, so I, I, it's very unlikely that uh, I would find um, a volunteer uh, ST, which could do part of that. I, uh -huh. could, I could try the other device, but uh, th th this reason I knew that from the very beginning. So that's why I believe that we should, in that concept, for, uh, assuming I have a partner, I should spend a good time in the uh, to have to reach a good design of the vessel in order to have as thin as possible vacuum vessel but obviously which doesn't collapse with uh, ultra low vacuum 
And so basically the idea is to have a, a field penetration very fast, soak through, uh, will be very short in order to, to control the, the, the plasma, it to act from the poloidal field coils to compress that plasma. But um, so basically I have to put attention all these strafe fields, which was a major problem for uh, TFTR when they tested the adiabatic compression. And they realized that the, one of the major problems of the, the, not having something fully adiabatically, it was by stray fields which degrade the energy confined time. So basically there are lots of experience that one can learn from the community and also look at from the ATC, the adiabatic compressor, Torus, which was the device, the only device created deliberately to do adiabatic compression principle, which works well. But so the idea is to revise that one at the ultra low aspect ratio and pay attention to all the engineering aspects, particularly the ones which may um, 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 reduce all the flux inside of the device. Uh, because of um, you know, inappropriate vessel thickness and or in vessel components. So they, the, 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 the machine as it is, doesn't help, there's no in vessel components other than uh, the central rod and some uh, protection. All right. So, uh, so basically, uh, the idea, I mean, just to summarize, I, I, I believe that I should not rush to create that one from the scratch for existing material because uh, I may not validate the concept of uh, the about compression at the ultra high beta. So I All need right, to Kelsey. We're, reach, we're reaching the, the, the actual 10, 10 o'clock uh, hour mark. Uh, and okay. I'm not seeing anybody else that wants to ask any questions. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I have one. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, oh. Are, you, are you good, Matt? Okay, so sorry, very quick. Um, what's the rise time for the Little internal field pulse. So I uh, I I I I haven't designed the, the pulse system, but I know okay. that I I expect by the scaling laws to have energy confined time of my target high beta plasma of twelve milliseconds. Therefore, anything if I compress in a time scale of three milliseconds or two milliseconds, I will be you know doing something perhaps close to adiabatic. Uh, scenario. Okay. So, okay. so basically, in cool. two milliseconds and three milliseconds is a relatively long time scale for you know a fast yeah. pulse system. So yeah, I'm very comfortable on cool. that. Um, could I could I also ask you what volumetric compression ratio you're after? Sorry, uh, the volumetric compression ratio. Um, yeah. <sighs> Well, let's see here. Um, I think it, it's going to be much higher. Let's go back backwards. Let's see here. And then okay. yeah. Matt, that's my last question. Okay. Uh, well, um, um, the, I have the um, 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 a, a radio compression uh, ratio of 145 and the radio 3. So I, okay. if I combine both of them, I do believe I, I, the volume is reduced more than 10 times. Okay. So, okay. Cool. Uh, okay. So basically what I do, what I, what I, what I did here, basically I, I assume I can compress the plasma both by pulsing the toroidal field in a minor radius. And also I can simultaneously pulse my vertical field in order to move in a major radius. So I have those two combined. So, and uh -huh. both of them in an adiabatic way. So this is the best of the best I can have. Okay. Cool. Um, it, is, it is 10 o'clock. Um, so I, I'm gonna thank our presenter uh, because we have to end at this point. Um, of course, the rest of the time is open time, so uh, from this point forward, uh, if you'd like to leave the call, I'm going to turn off the recording, and um, that'll, that'll be it.